Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gina and this channel is called Fully Loving You because I love to make videos all about perfectionism and self-love. I'm an integrative nutrition health coach and I help women with their perfectionism and self-love problems and try to solve them in a more sustainable way. If that sounds like stuff that you're interested in, feel free to like this video and subscribe. I am making a video today all about the top five books that have changed my life, especially around the topic of perfectionism. So with further ado, without further ado, <laughs> I mean, let's get started. A couple things before we get started. Yes, I am on the floor. <laughs> I'm trying to change it up. Uh, with my location, but I can only film in my bedroom. My toddler is sleeping. He is 15 months um, I do make videos on motherhood and parenthood So if you haven't watched those videos make sure to hit the playlist all about motherhood and parenting and um, That whole thing But yeah, that is not the topic for today but my other thing I was gonna say is I organize this video in a way that is a little bit more digestible so for each book, I tried to think of three learnings from each book that I took away and also write down a couple of quotes that I really loved. Preferably one, some of them have a couple of them, but that is how I'm going to organize today's video for the top five books that I loved. My first book that I'll mention is called Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. She is the author of Eat, Pray, Love, and um, she wrote this book all about creatives and how to tap into your creativity. Um, some learnings, I have my phone here because I just can't remember all of that <laughs> mom life. Um, but my three learnings from that book was um, being in a creative world, uh, being creative in a world that belittles creativity. So I actually didn't realize that our world kind of does that. And she really shines a light on the fact that we are not encouraged to be creative. Um, and one of the other things I loved is she says that we are all creative beings. And I love that she mentions this because I am a performer and singer dancer, but for someone who works in an office, they may not think to themselves, I am a creative being. Um, so she really puts that into your mind about, hey, you were born creative, you were born whole with the ability to be creative. And we're just living in an environment that kind of belittles creativity and makes it sound like it is not worth trying or only the talented, only the successful um, are creative. So I love that she talks about this. And, um, you know, if she, she also says if we don't focus on performing well creatively, um, being creative in small ways can enhance your life, whether it is working in an office and maybe doing something creative on the side like crochet or pottery making or painting, um, or even if it's something digital like graphic design, but only for your benefit, not necessarily um, the benefit of others or trying to be super successful or perform for other people. I think that is what she stresses the most is really doing it for yourself. And my third learning on that book is that we should not be fitting into a box. So it kind of goes along with the other two things that I mentioned. Um, but she also says that we, um, there is these, these creative expectations that we have in our society. And it's all about fitting into a certain mold, a certain box. And um, that really puts a lot of fear into us. So she really takes that away and talks about how to create for yourself and create for your own happiness without the expectation that someone will see it. Maybe create, write a book or do whatever you want to do, not thinking that anyone is gonna see this project, but only for the benefit of you and your creative juices, your soul. So I love that she mentions that, taking the fear out of life and expectations, whether it's around creativity or anything, that is a huge issue with perfectionism. So after reading this book, that really hit me hard, especially as a creative, a performing creative, um, but looking at both sides of that, the expectations, performing for myself um, and not fitting into a box or a mold. The quote that I really loved from this book, and of course it mentions perfectionism, so that's why I loved it so much. So I'll read it now. I think perfectionism is just a high-end, hot couture, 
version of fear. I think perfectionism is just fear in fancy shoes and a mink coat, pretending to be elegant when actually it's just terrified. Because underneath that shiny veneer, perfectionism is nothing more than a deep existential angst that say again and again, I am not good enough, I will never be good enough. That hit me hard. So I love this book and what she talks about around fear and expectations, even if it's something that you may not be able to relate to as well. The next book I want to mention is called Taking Charge of Your Fertility by Toni Weschler. It may seem like a very odd book to put in this topic um, or this video because it's not really something I would consider like an inspirational um, self-help book. However, it is a huge book about this thick all about women's female health. I guess that would be the same thing. Women's health, um, especially around fertility, their cycle, birth control, uh, and using the fertility awareness method. Toni Weschler is, um, she has, I think, a master's in public health, and this is a best-selling book, and she has lots of resources online, so I would even consider going to her website to download some of this information. Anyway, I read this book after I got off my cruise ship contract. So quite late in the game, around 30 years old, and I learned a lot of things in that book about my health, about my female health that I had never learned before. And after reading that, I felt kind of gypped. I felt kind of um, like I was misled or deceived about my body and about how my body was supposed to function, especially around my period, my menstruation, um, how to prevent getting pregnant, things like that. So I loved this book more for the knowledge and also putting a lot of empowerment back into my own, my own self. So the three, three things that I learned from this book more, more so is body awareness and um, around perfectionism, body awareness and health and how your body functions, it eliminates shame around any bodily functions that may not be going the way you want them to. Um, so really understanding your body and how it functions is key to not feeling a lot of shame and guilt around things that are going on like if you have like a pimple right here um, I know for me that's it's something that I did something that I chose um, to make that happen and how is my body reacting to this not oh god I'm so ugly you know putting shame on yourself um, is not the answer so this book really puts the power back into you and um the other thing I loved is the fertility tips, the birth control and fertility tips. I was more in touch with my own body and honoring it and what it needs. So it didn't necessarily need a birth control pill. That was not my only answer. I could, you know, make another thing that I said. The other learning is making educated decisions based on um, my female health. So all of this information in that book was incredibly useful and hit me in a way with perfectionism that showed me that there is a different way that I need to be more informed about my body so that I don't feel shame and guilt around it and make more informed decisions about what I need in my health um, as opposed to you know my body's not good enough I'm not good enough words like that the quote that I love from this book not inspirational but uh, definitely um, informational. <laughs> Once people understand that women are fertile for only a fraction of the time men are, they are especially struck with the inequality of it all. So it's particularly interesting to examine the ways in which women have been disproportionately exposed to side effects throughout their cycle. For example, there are many who will coincide that while the pill was originally designed for sexually emancipate women, it has also had the effect of burdening the women with the sole responsibility of birth control interesting quote but at the same time again it's empowering you to work alongside of your partner or just have more information about how your body functions so that you necessarily don't feel the burden of taking it on by yourself um, so I just love that she mentions that as well okay I thought the floor was going to be comfortable but I'm like my posture is not great so I'm like wiggling <laughs> okay number three the book that I absolutely loved this is probably my top book 
that I have read recently that I have just learned so much from and taken so much knowledge from. It is called More Than a Body by Lexi and Lindsay Kite. They are twins. They have their PhDs in female body image and they also designed a nonprofit called Beauty Redefined. These topics in this book were like spot on to what I help my clients with and what I was going through in my own life as well around body image. With perfectionism, body image is huge. It is a taboo topic that not many people talk about and the way that they word it is different from what's in the media currently. So what's in the media currently is a lot of like body positivity, um, body neutrality, things like that. But the focus is w one of my learnings that I mentioned. The focus is still on your body. So they spend a lot of time talking about objectification. So the way that our culture objectifies bodies and making our physical beings the most important part of our worth and most important part of ourselves um, is still happening. So we're still like, oh, even though my body is bigger, it's still beautiful. Stop making the body the focus is what they say. You know, no, nobody cares. If you're making it about accepting your large body, I love that for you. But also like you're justifying, you know, how you feel about your body to the public. Um, and that shouldn't be the focus. We're objectifying our bodies. We're focusing on um, certain parts of our bodies as if we're not a whole being inside and out. And that's really what they spend a lot of time talking about. Um, and one of the quotes that I love from them is, your body is an instrument, not an ornament. You know, our bodies can do so much, which is why I loved the book prior, learning about how our body functions. You know, I've had a baby recently and it is a miracle having a baby and you appreciate your body so much more for what it can do, not necessarily what it looks like all the time. So let's appreciate that and honor that. Um, you know, our bodies were not designed to be consumed by others. In other words, how we look for others pleasure. Um, so really taking away the focus from our bodies and looking at ourselves as a whole being. Another thing that I learned from that book is about um, the media. And I already knew this a lot from my advertising class. Oh, my back hurts. Um, but this was a deep dive into media consumption and how it has empty promises, how we are exposed to unrealistic images of what we should be doing and how it puts shame and guilt on us, which is directly related to perfectionism. Um, so like advertisements, social media, TV, and film. So they really go into some practical tips about how to deal with that, work on that, um, and move on from that, really. Um, essentially, it's about how you use social media, who you follow, who you're having access to, um, and how it's affecting you. So all of those topics and all of those tips can really make a huge difference in body image. And going along the lines of body image um, or body positivity, body neutrality, they think that body image resilience is um, the best thing to focus on, which is no matter uh, knowing that your body is good, no matter what it looks like, instead of body positivity or body neutrality, still not making it about the looks. Um, so again, they, they talked a lot about resilience of the body and um, knowing in your heart that it is good, not that you have to prove something um, or have to validate to anyone else that it is good. I loved this book so much that I have three quotes here. <laughs> the first one is, you are more than a body and you knew that once. It takes some serious work to remember, understand and experience this truth that you are more, more than beautiful, more than parts that need fixing, more than an object to be look at, looked at and evaluated. Second one is positive body image isn't believing that your body looks good. It is knowing that your body is good regardless of how it looks. Third one is my favorite. Self-care is really rooted in self-preservation just like self-love is rooted in honesty. That was from Lizzo. <laughs> 
So great book. I highly, highly recommend it be on every woman's shelf because it is a taboo topic that not many people are talking about. We are still addicted to the media and the way that we look. And um, I really, really want to focus on this in my coaching practice and help women with this specific topic um, more. The fourth book that has changed my life was the book Fair Play. Um, it is by the author Eve Rodsky. She is Harvard trained and she used to be in uh, organizational management. So she was trained in that. So she was really good at systems, really good at um, project managing and all of that at her job. And she wrote this book all about domestic life. So short story, the reason why I got this book is because I was listening to a podcast and she was one of the guests. And she talked about um, this spreadsheet that she took that she put together with her and her friends. And after a situation happened where she was juggling so much and her husband, like she was triggered by something her husband said about, you know, why didn't you get the blueberries at the grocery store? Why didn't you bring home blueberries? She just lost it. Um, as you would if you're juggling a million things and someone's complaining about blueberries. So she put together a spreadsheet of all the little details of what she does for the home, for the kids, for everything involved in her domestic life that doesn't involve her career. So it was a spreadsheet of everything. Then she started asking her friends, hey, look at this list, add on anything you think that you do in the home. I just thought this was hilarious. So she ended up having a spreadsheet that was like pages and pages and pages, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tasks that were involved in this spreadsheet. And she just started looking at it like, how can this change? How can we be different? How can we make it more balanced? Because the woman and the female in the home is doing so much. And that is why she's mentally drained and burdened. So I loved that story and I loved that she wrote a book about it and it's more like a game you work in tandem with your partner there's no um, like blaming there's no shaming there's just a lot of information on how our culture has ended up this way with the woman in charge of the home and getting burnt out and not feeling like she um, can balance that out with her partner so the three things that I learned from this book um, was just what I said. So breaking down traditional traditional domestic roles. Um, so she talks about the history of how we got here and also how women in general or even men are using toxic time language. So, you know, oh, well, she has more time because she doesn't have a job. So that's why she does more. Or, you know, the man's time is more valued when he's not working because he has a full-time job. Um, you know, those sort of toxic time language, she breaks down and says, this is not healthy. This is not a healthy phrase to be living by because, you know, the wife or the woman who doesn't work a full-time job and clocks in, she may be working 24 hours a day and wins her rest time. You know, why is her time not valued the same? So that's just an example, but she really goes into detail about all of those time, um, toxic time languages. And I've even caught myself being like, oh yeah, I've said that before too. Um, so they're very relatable. The next thing that I learned from this book is really just about owning your worth and owning your identity. So I've already realized like just having one child and having a toddler that when you become a mom, your identity completely changes. So it's about really owning who you are inside without your mom identity um, and making sure that you spend the time to do that. When you are like boggled down with all these tasks and don't have any time for you, you really lose your sense of identity and your sense of worth. And there's a lot of um, bitterness going on in the home when you don't have that time for yourself. So she really goes into detail about um, what she calls a unicorn space. So a space for you where you can be creative that's only for you. And she even wrote a book about unicorn space, which I really wanna read next. And the last thing I think was just brilliant, it goes along with her organizational management skills. And she talks about how each task has three parts to it. There's a conception, there's a planning period, and there's an execution. So for example, groceries. 
So conception would be, okay, I'm coming up with the idea that we need, you know, this, this, and this for our groceries this week because, you know, we need to cook these and these dinners. So I'm coming up with this list or like, we need more mustard. So the next stage would be planning. Okay, when am I going to go to the grocery store? How am I going to get these groceries? Um, when am I going to go get them? Is the kids going to be with me? Blah, blah, blah. And then execution is obviously self-explanatory is just going to do that task. So unfortunately, the woman in the home traditionally does all three of these tasks within or these steps within a task. And unfortunately, traditionally, the man in the relationship does only the execution. So when she talks about giving tasks to your partner or splitting and rebalancing domestic tasks, she talks about every single step not just the execution okay you do this and that way i don't have to do it but she wants you to take over the whole process because you're still having a lot of mental load by doing the conception and the planning so she talks about if you're going to take on anything to do with the car it needs to be the conception the planning and the execution not just driving the car to the shop and me doing all the other work so I just love that concept and I love that she takes something so clear within the workplace and so clear within a career and the office space and ties it into home life and how to manage your home life. I just think that that is brilliant. <laughs> and just a quick and dirty quote from this book that I really love. We expect women to work like they don't have children and raise children as if they don't work. I love that. I am just wiggling all over the place. I'm probably not going to pick the floor next time because I'm just so uncomfortable. Okay, fifth and final book. It is called Brave Not Perfect. And obviously it drew me to it because it had the word perfect in it. Um, so I had a feeling it had something to do with failure, perfectionism, um, all those perfectionism tendencies. So I was drawn to it. And the author is really cool. She um, actually ran for Congress and fell flat on her face. And she talks about it in the book and how she learned so much from that experience and how to fail and take risks. And that um, not many women are doing that around her and not many women are doing that in her field of work. So she wrote this book and she actually started a foundation called Girls Who Code, um, which is just building up the confidence in girls and women around not being a scared of failure and really taking risks in your career and pushing to be better, not in a sense of like, you're not good enough, but just owning your worth and owning that you are allowed to be seen and you are allowed to have a career in maybe something that is not traditionally a female career. So I just love that she talks about her path of failing and failing very hard. Um, and I think we need to hear more of those stories in our culture and in our world because it's very relatable and it makes people connect to one another on a human level. So my fear of failure around perfectionism has gotten so much better. And I have found that when I share my failures, um, I connect with people immediately and you really go down to their level instead of pretending like everything's great. Um, that is no way to connect with your fellow humans because we are not perfect. We are all so imperfect. And if we pretend that we're not, it's, it's really isolating ourselves. And obviously I just went on a ramble about it, but my three learnings, uh, the first one is not being afraid of failure and shying away from perfectionism. Those who fail are those who, sorry, those who never fail are those who don't take risks. So if you are not taking risks in your life, in your career, in your love life, in your creativity, in your anything, you are not taking risks in your life um, because you don't want to fail or you don't want to um, be embarrassed or be sh shamed. 
um, or look bad or have a bad reputation. I just, I think we are too scared of that, um, which means we stay stagnant. We stay in the same place and um, we don't live the life that we want to live. So this is super directly related to perfectionism. Um, and I love that she talks about this in her book. She even has with some called Failure Fridays on social media, where she'll share something from the week or the past two weeks uh, where she failed religiously and she just shares it. And I think that's important. Another thing I already mentioned is creating humanness and community around courage, uh, not reputation and image. So how are we building up our community of, of women especially and saying, wow, you were so brave to do that. I am so proud of you. Um, strong female communities breed strong females. So really building each other up, really connecting with others around courage and not so much about image and reputation. And the last thing, she does talk about how women are raised and how we have this misconception of not taking risks um, and that we should remain humble and quiet and keep the peace and be people pleasers. Um, and anything outside of that is considered bitchy <laughs> to say the least um and i just i think that is so true it's i've noticed that throughout um my childhood and my young adult life is i am someone who speaks up and i'm someone who believes in justice and who believes in sticking up for the underdog and um and i just find that when women stick up for themselves especially or speak out against something that they may not agree with, it is considered going against the grain and may be looked bad upon in our culture. Um, but I wanna consider that not everyone feels that way and the more that you don't do that, the more that you will be stationary and stay in the life that you do not love for yourself. You're gonna be bitter, you are going to not like um, your situation that you're in because you're unhappy. And um, anyway, that was a big ramble about that. But overall, taking risks, not being afraid of failing, and being okay with going against what everyone else wants to do, and um, not living by those traditional female traits of quiet, humble, don't speak, um, not being scared of going against that. Well, those were my top five books that have changed my life. Um, one of them that did come in runner up was called Essentialism, beautiful book. And um, it taught me a lot about minimalism and minimalism in our thoughts, minimalism in uh, our tasks, our to-do lists, and how to say no, <sighs> so big. So that would be a runner up for me and I probably have some other ones, but can't think of them now and I wanna make sure that this video is brief. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so that I can create more videos like this. If you have any topics that you would love for me to make a video on around perfectionism and self-love, please drop a comment below. I would love to hear from you. I would love to know what you're struggling with and what you wanna hear more of. Um, also, I am taking clients currently, so please hit one of the links down below to have a free discovery call if you want to um, further your progress in your perfectionism and self-love journey. So I'd love to hear from you as well. But anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.